uh, across Asia, and it's going to be a fun matchup to see. Now, we have seen Urgot mid as well. I don't expect this for Bjergsen. I expect it to be the into Aatrox pick, but still one to watch for. Yeah, technically, those are both flex picks. Aatrox and Urgot can be moved to either solo lane, but Aatrox probably a higher percentage there for the top side. Uh, Ur Urgot definitely very versatile. Galio Ban does come out because Camille's already been picked up by Cloud9. That is one of the best combinations in the game. You have Camille, guaranteed engage, and locking people in a, an area for Galio's big AoE stun to arrive. And you can see a TSM still uh, respecting the hard engage comps that C9 could run. You think back to the semifinal, Leona had featured in that series somewhat prominently. So Zazel losing another support from his pool as Tom Kench was picked. Rom and Leona were banned, and he's going to play something else. All right. So yeah, they're they're definitely whittling down on a couple of the support role picks here for Zazel, who has been a big playmaker for Cloud9. You know, coming in out of the Academy League very early on, and he was one to stick on the starting roster. Ooh, they move Urgot. Urgot, yep, switch down here, probably to Bjergsen now. Could definitely have a little bit of wiggle room, but <laughs> not that Urgot much. Urgot jungle! <laughs> I've seen it, all I'm saying is okay. I've seen it. <laughs> that, that's fair. Uh, I've seen uh, Oriana jungle as well. My <laughs> old five friend uh, not going to be bringing that on the, on the LCS stage anytime soon. All right. Meanwhile, though, the big lock-in of the sign. This is what I was talking about earlier, the kind of the archetype for TSM, is they have three tanks, and they've already got them here. Tom Kench, Urgot, and uh, Scion here from the top side for Haunter. Plus, Scion gives guaranteed repeatable engagements for the late game. When you get a little bit of cooldown reduction and you rank up your ultimate, gets almost to 30 seconds there. And you can just fire off ulti after ulti uh, to get those hard engagements, especially if you're ahead. Absolutely. And we're going to see what they're against here in Cassiopeia being hovered. And Jensen going to play Cassiopeia into Urgot, a matchup we saw mm -hmm. in Echo Fox versus Clutch. It was in the top lane. Uh, this one going to go into the mid lane now and, as well. And that one in the top lane also had a first blood start at yeah. uh, level one. Yes, so it, did. it wasn't, you know, the greatest of samples. <laughs> Cassiopeia is safer in the mid lane. Also has the range advantage over Urgot, which is very big for the mid lane. But again, jungler presence means so much in this. And if Cloud9 are going to have Blabber on his Camille, which he's been so aggressive on and has played around the mid lane, Camille and Zach are two of the longest range engagement for junglers, and both of them perfectly uh, built to camp around the mid lane. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup between Jensen and Bjergsen. Both of those guys are extremely star you know, mid laners with very high skill caps. Junglers are going to want to get them ahead. And this is not the first time Bjergsen's brought out Urgot in the NALCS postseason. I think back to old Urgot in around 2015 where he took down Cloud9 at the, uh, out in the sun, I think, at this arena outside, mm -hmm. and uh, that was exciting as well. Either way, we are into game one of this best of five. Aatrox coming back in North America. Blabber on another aggressive player with that Camille, but Zach still in the pool for Grig. And the only real ranged marksman on that TSM lineup is Sven. Yeah. He'll be the big damage dealer here. It's going to be an exciting one. Coaches shake hands. They've got more to play, but a very exciting draft all the same. Yeah. I mean, we were projecting at least three tanks for TSM. I count Urgot as a tank because yeah. you basically build Black Cleaver and then a bunch of tanky cooldown reduction items. So they've got basically four. And it's going to be up to Sven to have that big damage percentage that Analyst Dash mentioned. Ooh. He at Worlds has had the highest damage percentage for a team in any single run of any year at World. Yep. And here we go. Score, zero to zero. Someone's going to take the first one of the best of five. Three Nexuses sends you to Worlds. Cloud9 and TSM ready to do battle. Let's get into Summoner's Rift. Final stage of the North American Gauntlet. Both these teams going to fight it out here. Cloud9 have had such a miraculous run at the end of summer, and they want to make it count here and convert. Speaking of damage, they have damage from basically every roll. Uh, yeah. Very different compositions we have on our hands here. If Cloud9 get an early lead, it can look like a very one-sided game here because they have so many options for damage. And in the early game, you will win skirmishes across the map because TSM won't be able to group up with their, with their big damage. 
And it's not even just options for damage, it's options for diving as well. You think Aatrox can revive, Camille can drop aggro, Alistair can practically invincible. They're pretty good at really pressing the advantage. Those dives are going to be exciting. And because that is so important for this Cloud9 composition, I would expect uh, a lot of focus on Blabber and Blabber's early route here. Uh, you know, either give him a strong pull on the red buff so he can take over both Scuttle Crabs in the river. Camille absolutely will destroy Zach. Even though Zach, after you get some levels, uh, you know, can have a good presence around mid lane with Elastic Slingshot. Early on, Camille uh, has a huge priority over him with the hook shot, and she will be able to dictate this early game. So it's up to Cloud9 uh, to use Blabber and, you know, his aggressive playstyle here try and help him out early. Here we go, though. It is going to be the double pull on the red buff, kind of as we're expecting. Licorice with a nice ward here on Krugs, too, because yep. that is a very common second camp to go to now. Yeah, especially for magic damage dealers like Zack. Krugs have negative magic boost and high HP. Zack has percent health damage. He actually slaughters those camps. So we'll see if he goes for it. As that red comes down, we'll try. Yeah, it's actually funny because it has evolved to be Zack's favorite camp. Because of the magic resist you mentioned, Zack used to love going uh, blue side to do the uh, blue Gromp. buff as well as the Gromp at the same time. But because Crux is so valuable now and he absolutely destroys them uh, with his spam AOE, this is definitely the new route. And it was a very good ward there by Licorice seeing it. Meanwhile, Blabber gonna make his way to the top side as well. So Cloud9 get to be informed of the jungle pathing of Grig. They know his right side jungle is totally open and Blabber can Use that to take whichever camps he wants. I expect him to get a lead in the early jungle pathing because of that information difference. He's going to head up towards the top scuttle, and I want to see what he's able to take away from Grig that's not just simply both scuttles. And we need to also look at it from TSM's perspective, right? They pick this Zac into the Camille knowing that they're going to need vision to protect Zac early on. Whenever you have this scaling jungle difference, you know that your laners are also going to have to have that in mind. Hey, we're not going to have presence early, so play your lane accordingly. And that You can see it in all those wards in the river uh, defensively for TSM. They know Blabber is now going for the second scuttle. If he uses all of his abilities on the scuttle, then you can go for the engage. Ball ends coming up. Yes, yeah, is Blabber going to be in a part of one? He tries to get the Q backwards, and the auto is going to pull him back. And where is going to the team go? They're going to fight, fight, and it goes over to Grig. And looks like Blabber is able to get away safely. He had the E available, so no dive. But Grig able to match in camps. And great move there by Mithy. It's all about the support from your team when you're going for these jungle skirmishes. Zack is able to steal that one away, but Blabber slips into the blue buff. Can he finish it before the wolves are finished? Yeah, he's got an Alistar as well. This seems pretty likely. So as this gets stolen away, we've got a Scythe report from Avli. That's word from Reaper. Thanks, guys. Reaper said that the team watched TSM play yesterday and that they actually looked pretty scary coming into today. He said that the team fixed most of their problems coming from Oakland and that they've now found their stride. What I loved was, these, was that he told his players, guys, if you don't have confidence, trust in me because I'm confident in you. Back to you guys. Reassuring words from Reaper. If yep. you don't have your own confidence, just trust in me. And he talked about them finish, uh, fixing some of the problems from Oakland. We have already seen a, a difference in champ select right here. Sneaky, right? On the Kai'Sa. So reliable, late game scaling. You no, know, doesn't have to play like a Quinn who has to get an early lead, play side lanes to join, you know, get pickoffs in, and won't be able to put out team fight damage later on. Kai'Sa definitely very capable of that. Well, also being one of the champions that can, in fact, push side lanes later on because of her ultimate being able to join from a yeah. long range away. That's one of the reasons he played Quinn so much was the ability to play from map mobility. And even though he didn't win any of those Quinn games against TSM, it was something that seemed to be pretty powerful throughout the season. Take also, this, oh, go ahead. Also, the other champion that uh, they got a lot of criticism for was the Twitch. I looked yep. it up in summer of 2018. Twitch has not won a single game in any professional region. Actually, only been played three times. Yeah. I lost all three. Uh, SKT first, Gen G was the other one where Bane tried to use it. Yeah. But not anyone finding success with that one quite yet. Okay, we'll see it come back one day. I'm sure we will. Either way, we take stock of the map real quick. And we did see earlier, Blue Buff gets stolen away. Blabber should have an eventual camp lead over his uh, opposing jungler in Grig. But the rest of the lanes, you've got plus eight for Licorice in the top lane. A very small lead for Jensen in mid, but a quite sizable advantage for Sven and Mithy down on the bottom side. So advantages on different sides of the map. You expect Aatrox to be a lane bully. Uh, Varus kind of the same. Should 
almost always be ahead of uh, Kai'Sa at least a little bit. Yeah, this is with Kai'Sa with a teleport though. Also, Jensen actually gets ganked in mid lane. Q gets the auto attack as well. Really good damage. And Jensen's gonna flash backwards down to 400 HP. But here comes the re-engage. Supports are here. Greg has the passive. No chase to be had. But Blabber only level four has the kite back. Not quite knocked up. But they're gonna push back in there. They look at the stun. But Minty's there to grab him back out. Beard's gonna stay alive. Gonna be no kills. A lot of flashes though. Both mid laners in the end have to blow their flashes. Grieg as well from the jungle. And Zach, this is still fairly early stages into the game, so I would expect Blabber to try and play aggressively following this. Get some deep vision right now while you force them off of the map. And uh, Zach, you know, in base right now, you can see already the Cloud9 vision on top side is starting to creep in around that red buff. Would expect them, uh, you know, to make an offensive move up here. Blabber now taking over the scuttle, feeling very confident now as far as the flashes have been blown. Chunk down there. You mentioned that teleport was brought on Sneaky here. That TP has been used. And as both AD carries get back to lane, it is still a farm lead for Zven as they both got pretty decent recalls. Blabber seeing if there's a play to be had on the top side. Keep in mind, level six for both top laners means Chance for Dive could be there, but now on the bottom side, Teleport's coming down as well as the fight is coming in. Greg, level five, looking for the next play to be had. Zazel gonna zone out the rest of his players, but he's a bit alone. Ult's gonna go wide, finds a stun, but he has nowhere to go. First blood to be grabbed, goes over to Bjergsen. Big pickup here for TSM. First blood in the mid lane for Bjergsen. After all the shenanigans that we just saw with everyone blowing flashes and the conversion around mid lane, he actually uses the teleport bottom. This is something that you do need to be aware of for Cloud9. He just got off his recall from mid lane, uses the teleport bottom lane. It's actually just a very good ward that they had there previously. Uh, super deep, allowing Bjergsen to come in right behind the C9 duo as they were pushing up in the lane. And that was one of the first times that they had been that exposed. They're down in CS being pushed under tower by Varus, and TSM very happy uh, with that first blood and this early lead. It's gonna feel really good. The only kind of recompense in the mid lane was four CS for Jensen. Those mid laners are still equal otherwise. So a well-timed teleport with Spellbook turns that into an ignite for the time being. So uh, Bjergsen might find a repeat gank at some point or can at least defend himself. Yeah, Azale talked about it yesterday. Uh, had a little Urgot demonstration and mentioned the Spellbook and the options that you have with this, right? You can swap over, catch people by surprise with a teleport, even smites later on. So. Keep your eyes on which summoner spell uh, Bjergsen does go to. Right now, though, Flabber goes all in on Grig. Intense with the ult as well. Ult's gonna come across, pulls him right back out. Smites under the red buff, gonna jump away. Staying alive on this one now, Blabber. Sadly for him, the red buff is going to leash back. He has a top laner around, though. They might stay. Yeah, he should be able to finish it off with uh, pure damage here. Both of them did use their smites on uh, the fight earlier on. Grig trying to get some life back, and Blabber trying to use the challenging smite for some true damage. They don't get the kill, but they do steal away the red buff and exchange ults. This has been good invading by Blabber though. On this very early pick, Camille got a lot of pressure, has now taken half of Grig's buff so far this game. Yeah, and to be fair to Grig, this is what you have to do with this champion matchup. Zach is on the defensive early on. Uh, very good stuff here by Grig though, making use of the early power that Camille is gonna have in that matchup. Also, again, the solo laners collapsing for Cloud9 and coming to help out with that invade. You can see the almost 20 CS lead on top side for Liverish with his Aatrox. We've yep. seen Aatrox's biggest impact has been roaming around. You know, a lot of times to the mid lane, uh, into the jungle there, trying to use his ultimate early on to create skirmish plays for the team and get other lanes advantages as well. Well, he's helped get the red buff the one time. So that was pretty good, using his lane pressure for something on that side of the map. And we'll wait to see what he does next on this one. Both TPs were used about four minutes ago to get back into lane, and the second recalls have come through now as Aatrox has most of the Black Cleaver and his boots of speed. Blue buff handed off, no problem, over to the Bjergsen on the right-hand side of the map, still holding onto that Spellbook Ignite. Several minutes to go till his teleport's back up as well. Haunter this time will be the first one to roam down to this side of the map, and right now it's for a couple of wards, but might get behind Jensen. All right, we have that top laner roam to the mid lane. Jensen, no flash. The flash, E for the slow, the knockup, not quite gonna land, but they get the push back as well. There's no way out. He's gonna get pulled right back in. What a kill, Bjergsen 2-0. And, oh. and TSM with three members in the mid lane there, coming to help out Bjergsen. This is two kills now for the Urgot. He is gonna have a very fast Black Cleaver. And 
The thing about running so many tanks for TSM, you can group up super early on and have very high effectiveness because tanks have such good baseline effectiveness just with their base abilities and a single tank item. You can expect TSM uh, to actually have a very good grouping early on. Grig flies in. He actually never even got to touch Jensen as uh, Grigson threw him over the shoulder, got him with the ultimate there early on, but it was actually Hauntzer who had the effective roam from top lane that we were just speaking of as a possibility uh, for Cloud9 and Licorice to go for. So very good job by Hauntzer to actually jump on one of his slim openings. He hasn't yep. had too many of those to go look for it, but now Blabber he wants to make a play. Lit, got the ult, gets right back into the wall towards his turret, but at one-third HP, might have to kite away. Looks like no dive to be had as Grig is holding him alive. He does have Biscuits as well as uh, use his last charge of Corrupting Potion. So he's trying to eat the Biscuit now to sustain under his turret. And they also have Grig in the wings here, waiting to possibly turn it around even. All right, now onto the top side. It's a 2v1. Licorice does have Flash, has the ult as well. He's gonna run away and that is an ultimate down with the health bar still low. Yeah, ult was burned. Uh, the minions were killed off. So Grig had no other targets to try and auto attack and get is pull back on the stretchy arm, but Blabber now is going to have another option. Stretchy arm. I mean, it's called <laughs> stretching strikes. Now we got to head up over to the mid lane, but Mithy is around. Every time Zazel shows up mid, there's a Tom Kench to save the target. There are no ganks in rooms to be had. And that's the thing. If you're running such a tanky lineup, even if Cloud9 make a big roam, it takes you a while to burn the target down. So TSM have some time to react with other people converging. Look at the, how big the shield is already for Urgot on the activation there. The Black Cleaver's been completed, so 20% uh, cooldown reduction helps so much. He can make very good use of the passive armor shred on it because he can apply so many stacks very quickly. Uh, and again, gonna have high baseline of effectiveness. Maybe they use it for some early dragon control. This Cloud Drake could be quite important and already TSM actually grouping up on bottom side, laying down some control wards to try and make use of the long range engage that Zac has available. He's looking for it, going pretty aggressive. Now, Blabber not spotted by that Trinket Ward. Looks like no turret dire to be had. You mentioned the bottom side. Both first item spikes have come through. Storm Razor for Kai'Sa. So there's going to be AD Kai'Sa. They've got a mage in their team. But the uh, Blade of the Ruin King now done for Varus as well means that's going to be Sven online. And that Drake not going to be that hard to kill through that item. All right, couple of item completions for Cloud9 as well. Licorice, 131 CS on the top side of the map does have that lead over Hauntzer, has completed his Black Cleaver, and is trying to wear down on this turret, trying to you know, roam around, get some deep vision for the team. But it looks like, once again, most of the action bottom side away from Licorice as TSM want to get that first turret bonus. Lever saw Bjergsen coming down, but it might not matter. Bjergsen now subbed in a ghost as well. Now he's got two extra summoner spells that he's low. not bringing to the game. And yes, this turret about 500 HP. Its days are numbered. and. There is no pressure by Cloud9 anywhere else. There's no repeat gank for Blabber to knock down top. They're just going to be slowly losing this turret. And TSM will grow their lead from 1,000 to about 2,000 when that turret does fall. A little bit of a trade on the top side. Pretty good damage, but again, it does not seem to matter. Haunt has gotten more done this game. Yeah, a lot of sustain here. Again, just goes right back to chugging the Corrupting Potion. He's taking Grass here on the Scion. Once again, the recent changes to Scion that have seen him rise to almost 100% uh, presence in pro play has been that he gains very easily a lot of health from killing the minions now um, just passively as he stacks up plus if you add grasp on top of that he just gets very very healthy super early on and he can build lots of armor and resistances uh, rather than having to focus health there it is yep TSM getting their cake eating it too Cloud Drake plus first turret and Cloud have done nothing to stop TSM so far in this game the lead Almost 2,000 gold. They will get at least an answered Rift Herald. That is 100 gold plus at least a charge on a turret somewhere. Yeah, Cloud9, luckily for them, they do scale their damage super effectively. And they do have a pretty diverse profile here. Even though it is the Storm Razor's Kai'Sa, there's still a decent amount of magic damage that she's going to output, as well as Cassiopeia. If Jensen remains protected, she can absolutely destroy some tanks that are only stacking armor. As of right now, Hauntzer is purely built uh, itemized for armor. Uh, only his lane opponent, Bjergsen, has that stacked up some magic resistance right now uh, with the Negatron cloak. We'll see when that comes online as Briggs going to make his first luxury purchase. He's got his uh, 
Cinderhulk done already, so we'll see if that's Knight's Vow for armor or maybe a Spirit Visage for the very obvious MR plus healing synergy. Wait for that one later on. TSM moving back around the map, though, as Mickey clears away the wards. And they've been the proactive team, which is actually a little bit weird to say in this match. Cloud9 typically have had better early games, and TSM, you heard actually in, in the Bjergsen mini interview before the game, he said that they felt pressured that, oh, there's a Graves who's going to scale up. We suddenly have to be the proactive team. We have to make moves in the early game. But in this one, they are the team making the moves in the early game, and, and they're being benefited from that with their 2,000 gold lead now looking to move their team towards that mid side there with Bot pushed in. With the Cloud Drake, it makes the roams like this uh, much more threatening. You can see Sven moving in there towards Jensen. With the extra speed, you can get uh, in range and threaten that ultimate with the Chain of Corruption. So uh, Jensen had to go into evasive maneuvers very early on. TSM zone them off the turret a bit and get it down to 50%. They're at down to half, and still Cloud9 waiting for their openings. They had several lanes with small advantages. Blabber winning the jungle matchup, Liquor's winning the top side, but it doesn't seem to matter here. The level advantage actually for Grig in the jungle, despite losing those camps, despite oh. the invades. Zayza's got to go in for a two-person knockup. Mithy's still around, though. Unstoppable coming in, and it's Grig just going backwards towards the rest of his front line. No kills yet, but they're still going to be chasing. Jensen walks in, gets exhausted, and here comes Scion. He gets a knockup on a blabber. That's going to be a lot of stuns. Ults to buy some time. In comes Aatrox as well. 5v5 begins a headbutt forward. Grig has the passive haunts oh. as well, and they're going to find that kill. Licorice diving in and reviving as well. They knock down the Bloblets, and it's now time to try to pick up Zack on this one. They will not yeah, burn the teleport. Hearts are taking the chase. There's a TP to keep Greg alive. He's going to get right away burning that flash. Only one kill. The disengage for Cloud9, and the fight is stopped. What a fight. That was incredible here. Licorice comes down, flanks through the entire fight, flashes for the kill, finishes off Hauntzer, and you could see how difficult it was for Cloud9, even though they were able to tank out 100% of the health bars of two of TSM's tanks. It was Zack and Scion, both of them with passes to get back up and continue in the fight. So only one kill is awarded, but look how much work is done. And you can already see how much damage this uh, champion has the ability to put out. Zazel goes in, he's the one to start it all out for the team. He forces kind of the regrouping here from TSM. Hunter has a really good ult right onto Blabber, who is a squishy member. But you can look at the split focus. When Licorice comes in, he splits TSM, their tanks and their damage dealers across the map right here. Uh, and he's able to flash in, use his ultimate revive, but now he's got no revive. He's gonna be going down on that one. Licorice, good fights. It's bitter for you. There's the kill picked up. Hanser grabs that one, three to one TSM. Now into the mid lane is Cloud9. TSM very quick to strike back after that one. They get the revenge on Licorice. Meanwhile though, the Rift Herald push has to be answered. Uh, TSM, you can see three members coming down from the top lane play to try and deal with that one. Make sure that Cloud9 won't get any more out of it. And it is going to be one for one turrets right now. Sneaky and um, Sven are also still pushing on side lanes though. So we should have another turret trade on the opposite side of the map. Yeah, pretty good wards out from Zayla to keep him safe. You can see Mithy doing a very similar thing on this left hand side of the map. And a 1300 gold difference will remain about what it was before. Sven has time to knock that down. Gets all the local gold, but the only the plus 50. In this turret, there is a Scion nearby, but I don't expect this to be defended by TSM. Hans here just gonna grab a little bit of gold for himself. A little bit of XP, but knows he can't survive a tower dive when Zazel has Aftershock available. Sneaky should get local gold here as well and keep that game pretty close. Okay. All right, as we get further and further into the game, just, just look down the list of the TSM tanks and figure out which is going to be, uh, you know, an easy target to take down in the fight. The answer is none of them. The only one <laughs> is going to be Sven, and he's going to have the Tom Kench next to him. So we'll see how Cloud9 will manipulate the field to try and get a good flank on this Sven. You have multiple people pressure him. They're going to need multiple points of pressure uh, because they have so many tanks to actually work around. They definitely have the damage output, uh, but it's going to be difficult to pull it off. So let's see here with the towers falling, these deep wards become more and more important. You can see already TSM are moving up into Cloud9 territory, looking for another skirmish. He's gonna knock down this ward, so TSM get to claim that rush for now. Lava wants his chickens, might get him. Remember, this is an infernal Drake in 15 seconds here, so Cloud9 want to fight this. 
TSM, though, already with the vision control, this is a huge advantage. When you're the team with all the tanks, it's hard for Cloud9 to face check any of these brush. They don't have a super tanky member that wants to take those hits. Licorice is in! Ooh, over the wall, they're gonna go in for this one. Out of the back line goes Kaisa. Can they knock off anyone? Mithy a bit low. Zven's gonna stay alive. Watch ever sneaky gets away. Flashing away from the ultimate. It's engaged for Cloud9. Licorice, hope gonna end. Sneaky yep. chunked again a little bit, but now they've got the jump on towards Scion. Hauser's flashless. They've got the channel onto him. He's gonna go down. Jensen getting the second kill of the game. Now as Cloud9 get another one for zero. Once again, Licorice blinks down from the top side. This time, though, Cloud9, they chase off one of the tanks away from the rest of the group. And with the Camille ultimate, they know that Hauser will not be able to get away. So Blabber traps him in. They finish off the kill, and Cloud9 Starting to mount that comeback. They're not ahead in gold, but they have claimed the Infernal Drake for themselves. Game getting a lot closer. Watch this fight one more time. All right, so on the top side, Licorice goes in once again. He forces Ven to walk backwards, and then Sneaky is able to ult in off of Licorice's plasma charge that he applied to Ven, getting into the back line, forcing the Devour early. And this kind of made TSM split up. They had Haunter on the top side. He tried to run away, but Cloud9 can chase him down with the Camille uh, while he's separated from the group. And you mentioned the fact that Haunter had built only armor so far, still no magic resist, which meant he was pretty easy to cut down for Jensen here on this Cassiopeia. 3,000 gold on that fight, most of it into a very tanky Scion, but not against magic damage. It's definitely necessary for you to have a split damage profile when you're facing a team that has four tanks. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> because you don't want the enemy tanks to be able to have very gold efficient builds, only stacking one type. And that has worked out pretty early on here for Cloud9. Let's see about the next setup though, because it could very easily go the other way. Uh, if these control wards for TSM allow them to get the engagement on their terms. This is a Zac and a Scion, very good long range engagements that have follow up engagements from the Urgot as well as the Varus with your Chains of Corruption. That can look like a very long form of CC. Licorice now is going to be the target again as TSM go for the side lane. Might be found out on the side. Knock up, not quite going to land. He's gotten away from two of those so far, but now he's going to survive a 1v2 as Virgin has shown up, and the rest of the team only staying in the mid lane. So Licorice getting brought lower where they wait out the ultimate, Whoa. and they're going to force the revive. TP coming in now for the rest of the team to show up as Sneaky joins the fight. 2v1. Licorice trying to stay alive, trying to dodge the ultimate, but they're going to be chased down, and it's going to be a kill picked up now for Hanser. Now Zayz is going to be careful at half HP, flashing the wall, but the ultimate's still there. Still available for Bjergsen, they bring him low. They can knock that kill down as well, and Cloud9 give up two kills. And look at that, the two tanks from TSM are full health. Even with Licorice trying to fight them on the bottom side and fight his way out, they don't even put a dent in them. So he goes down again, plus the rest of Cloud9, who tried to collapse and help him out. This is going to be TSM taking over the Baron Pit area. With Blabber having Flash and Smite, you expect an actual Baron attempt to not be on the table, but they are going to try. They're going to force Cloud9's hand, make them face check. 50-50 is unlikely, but the ability to stop the team fight could be easy. And C9 have nobody helping healthy enough, no one tanky enough to face check this. All they have are squishy damage dealers and the possibility of stealing away. Licorice is alive again, though. 4v5 on the pit, Vision's there. Blabber can spike, can he beat Grit for this one? She doesn't help. How oh. are we gonna this one? Oh, it's beautifully done by Bjergsen, switching over to Smite with a spellbook, and the fight begins. An ultimate coming in for Grit. A lot of damage to the front line, but the tanks are beefy. A kill on the Hauntzer, and the Blob is now picked up as well. No TP's available, they can kill off Grit. He can die, Zayza will fall, the flash out, and Grit actually lives, they can't kill the Bloblets. Uh, TSM get the Baron one for one. Again, the Zack and Scion passives. After you do all that work burning through these tanks, Zack is able to get right back up, and Scion takes down a counter kill on your support with Zazel dropping here. So Cloud9, they aren't able to steal away this Baron. Have another look here, Freak. The Acer Predator replay here under this one, and the dive over, they choose to 50-50, and the double smite beats out Blabber. All right, so TSM, after securing that though, Cloud9 take the fight inside the Baron Pit. Blabber goes in, uses his stopwatch there, appears to flash over the wall, and even though it looks like they have the early lead in this fight, the Scion Zombie forces a flash and gets a counter kill while also buying time for Z uh, Grig to get back up, flash over the wall, and get himself to safety. So TSM with the Baron buff are able to take down the mid lane turret as well, and Cloud9 need to defend. 
And Kobe, I think we have to recalibrate what we consider 50-50 smites with Spellbook getting more and more popular, especially on mid laners who are the highest level champions in the game. That extra smite is so easy to make sure you land. Blabber never had the option of smiting that one on time, and TSM could say, yeah, you've got a jungler with flash smite. That doesn't matter. Our smites are bigger, and they were right. Yeah, it's also hard to coordinate your double uh, smites on your own team, though. TSM. Once again, looking for Licorice in the side lane, this would be the third time if they can chase him down that they were been able to catch him out. They can't do it though. Pops the ult, he runs away, and he actually buys a lot of time for Cloud9 here. He took out the minion wave. That's yeah. very important. Now there are no more minions. Oh, there's a cannon minion. Never yep. mind. Cannon's gonna be in range to break down the barrier. And they've got tanks in the front line just to siphon off a little bit of this one and slowly but surely. That turret is gonna fall. So TSM up 4,000. They still got Baron buff on four members and a minute to work with. All right, Cloud9 in full defensive mode right now. They need to just keep themselves safe at these turrets. Wait out the extra minute of the Baron buff that's gonna come through. Right now, 44 seconds left on this dragon. So TSM will still have Baron buff for the Drake that comes up and should be able to get priority over that area of the map. Take the Scuttle Crab uh, and set up enough control wards that Cloud9 will not be able to contest. Let's see if they do it, though. We'll see. 45 seconds. Baron, of course, will be easily on during the Ocean Drake fight as TSM start making their way down, grabbing their whole jungle. A blue buff on his vent. CDR, not a bad stat on that champion. Three item spike in for him. That's going to feel really good. Hurricane plus the two on hit items is a great spot to be at for the Varus. Sneaky still waiting to get towards that Zonia, so a much more powerful marksman down in the bottom lane. Sven having a much better game here. Third item in there as well for Bjergs and the Righteous Glory to set up the hard engage and look at all these wards coming down. They are keeping C9 out of this area of the map. They can spot them if they walk in. And it could be a very, very easily grab Drake. Yep, doing exactly that. Setting them all up here. They've taken the Scuttle Crab. They have full priority. They have the long range engage. So that's why we we're saying it should be their Drake to lose. Cloud9 will not want to get in range for a pick at the moment. It's just so easy for TSM tanks to get someone down to 25%, allow Bjergsen to finish them off with the ultimate. Drake has been picked up here. That is now two for TSM. All right, Cloud9 on the back foot, but with Baron gone, they can defend their turrets with relative ease. Keep most of alive. TSM did not pick up too much gold during that. The Baron power play, only 600 gold above what uh, the simple Baron kill itself would give. Game still within striking distance, but Cloud9 on the back foot or tail in Jensen's case. And DSM waiting for the next play. A while to go until Baron's back up. Three minutes and change. And Drake's going to be in six, and it won't even be the Elder. All right, now it's Cloud9. This is a dangerous period because they have consistently uh, gotten picked off in the side lane by TSM with good moves from TSM solo laners to allow TSM this lead that they've got right now. So this is the area of the game where Cloud9 want to stall and farm up. If you have a couple more items on all of these DPS members, that's when you really start to become threatening uh, as far as burning down some of these tanks and winning the team fight. In the middle area of the game here, around 30 minutes though, it's very difficult uh, you know, for this team to actually focus one of these tanks down in time and before TSM can actually get that lead. Zach now looking for some long range engages from the other side. And TSM pushing down this turret while Sneaky is actually pushing on top side for Cloud9. They're trying to trade turrets here. All right, 4v4 right. coming to the front line. TP in for Sign. The pass gonna be popped for Grit, but he's okay for now as the team shows up for the rest of the team fight. They're gonna still keep Kaisa in the top lane. Now, how's the engage gonna work? Grig is down. The TP coming in finally for the marksman of 5v4. Those could be Cloud 9's fight. Cloud reports to flash away, but the front line's still very durable. The back line, not too bad either. Mithy a bit low. Liquor's gotta be respectful. A stun comes in. Sven stays alive. It's a 4v4. Hauntzer walks back. Watch out for Jensen. He's knocked up. He's not going down. He forces the zone. He's now Bjergsen. Liquor's next. Oh! Oh, and they finally get those kills picked up. C9 on the chase. Licorice is low. The flash for Hauntzer. But he's going to be traded back by Sneaky. In goes Jensen. In goes Blabber. Trying to kite away. Over the wall goes Bjergsen. Can't quite find that kill. TSM routed. Cloud9 get up a kill. Is Blabber going to keep chasing there? Bjergsen's so low. But Mithy's bodyguard right now is going to allow him to walk out. And that was an incredible incredibly long 
long tower dive. A lot of DPS actually done by the C9 turret in this. TSM force it because they see Sneaky Top and they know that without the Kai'Sa, they actually have a chance for this. But what a counter from Sazel. Oh. Gets him with the Pulverize, completely destroys Griggs' opener here. And that forces TSM, they try and protect his Bloblitz with a secondary engage. And just look at all these stone plates from the TSM tanks. First the Taunter with the Scion, barely takes any damage. Then on the re-engage here, Bjergsen on the Urgot is gonna go in. He has a stone plate for himself too. Right there, they try to get the counter engage onto Sven, take out the big damage source. But here's number two. Hunter's healing up, he uses his stopwatch. Licorice flashes in for the kill once again though. He, him taking out the Varus uh, was very big, allowing Cloud9 to finish the chase. Then Hunter obviously gets his flash explosion off too. His zombie gets slowed down though, so he's not able to chase down Blabber. And we're back to the hectic mid game as the mini waves go back and forth. This game is at only two and a half thousand, and any team could win this one. We get later on in the team fights. We've got a very big set of items on Jensen. The Void Staff done. Death Cap not far away. Cassiopeia scales so well. Whoa. And they've got a knock up there. They look for Hauntzer. Very tank of the pops of stone plate. Not an easy target anymore. They're gonna kite back. Oh, it's not gonna land from Varus. Stoneplay is a very important cooldown to Kite for Cloud9. You can see them backing off, and now they can go for the re-engage. Smith, oh, he got pulled back! He's gonna go down! The flash is too late! He was willing to flash, but not after he got pulled back. And now the knockup comes in, but Liquor to the ulti on. Happy to chase forward. Two-man knockup. They're gonna chase to the back line, though. No one can save Sven! He's gonna surely be knocked out on this one, and the carry is gone. Hotsers alone. Three for zero, Cloud9. And just like that, Cloud9 are gonna be able to take over the TSM have been scattered. They can't even get back to defend at the moment. Two range minions left for C9 to push, and they're inside the base. Two minions will keep the push going. They have the frontline tank, and Zazel can hold the tower shots. Inhib turret gonna fall. The inhibitor itself gonna drop as well. 25 seconds on Sven, but more than 30 on Hauntzer, and it means the push continues. Grig is trying to cut off the minions, but these two range minions have been heroes. Well, Zazel gets the aftershock. He's gonna take it for a little bit, but Bjergsen frontlining so well. Licorice is low. The kill and a Grig. Respawn's coming soon. Still the five first two, but he pulls in them. The fear, fear, pushing Jensen onto the turret. Can they knock down Cass? They can't quite do it. The next turret is gonna fall. Sven is up in five seconds, though. One versus the world. Can he make it happen? He'll kill Licorice, but the next will drop. Cloud9, take game one. The stadium here absolutely erupted as that team fight began. TSM had control, but Cloud9, as soon as they got that pick, they kited, kited out the first stone play, 